All right. Good morning. Ready to do a podcast. Chris, what's going on? Good morning, guys. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I'm going to switch you around like I usually do. It always puts me first for some reason. That's good. Well, it's because <laughs> you are first. You're my boss. Everybody says, you know, how is it to be a boss? And I, I don't know. Ask Chris. Oh, I wish that were true. <laughs> you know, I, somebody has asked me the other day, do you have a lot of people that like you? And I said, yeah. I said, I've got my wife and my and Chris, my wife. Your, your, your dogs and your horses. My dogs. My Other horses. people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, and then, uh, you know, I went back over the list and I said, really, really my dogs and the horse, you know, that's pretty much not horses. Cause Diane's horse is like, you don't like too many not, people. Not sure. He likes well, Diane. he likes Diane. I'm sure at least half your kids like you. I don't know. <laughs> Grandkids I'm this already. <laughs> hey, so, you know, we want to take, we got some really, we're training this week. So we've got four, uh, four students here, an intern, and then we've got somebody really special, two people in the house. Uh, LC Power Tools is here today, so we're going to have them come up and say hi. Before we do, we want to take in special thanks for Double Black making this happen, and today, LC Power Tools uh, for making it happen. Uh, they allow us to do this every uh, every week, and uh, you know, our goal, I always have one person ask me this, Chris, is, hey, what's your goal of your podcast? We, one person, if we can get one person to respond to us and say, that really helped me, our goal is fulfilled. Seriously, that it's is it a big goal? Yeah, because if we can change one life on a weekly basis and kind of get them going the right direction, to me that's huge, you know. And I'm a simple guy. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, Rick Goldstein, um, Rag 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 Top Products uh, passed away this last weekend, and we want to pay tribute to Rick. Um, I go back with Rick. In 19, I couldn't remember if it was 1998 or 1999. I was working on a Porsche Boxster, and I had um, I had some sap pods um, from a uh, a tree that's it, it's just a mess up in Idaho that we couldn't get the sap pods off the top. Well, we could, but I wanted to make sure I didn't damage it. So there's this company that advertised all over back then. Really, wasn't too much on the internet. It was all over the magazines. So Wolfstein products. So I called Rag Ragtop and um, Ragtop. Um, whoever answered the phone, a guy called me back, and this guy named Rick, and is one of the friendliest guys I've ever talked to in my life. And that call started a, a friendship that's been going ever since. So if you didn't know who Rick was, I'm really sorry um, that you didn't get to meet him. Uh, but he is. He was one of the greatest greatest men in the industry and and he never turned anybody down from a good conversation at his booth at events uh so hey make sure to support him his family it's a family business spencer's jump you know straight in and has been there for a for a while but you know my regrets was not getting rick out here um you know we tried in covid you know we built this the shop right at, right before covid um broke out and it's a lame excuse it kind of goes down to what we're going to talk about today, ironically. Yeah. You know, we didn't know. But, you know, we wanted to kind of dedicate this to Rick. Um, well, you know, I hadn't gotten to know Rick well, but I, I have met him before. And, uh, you know, I've dealt with him. You know, last time I talked to him was over the summer. Uh, you know, Ragtop has supported our Air Force One project for a, a number of years now. And uh, they did it again this past summer. So, you know, that's the kind of guy he was, you know. Um, he was very supportive of everything in the industry. Yeah. He, uh, you know, for the, for eternal life, the rest of my life, it's one of the faces I've got burned into my memory. No lie. And the reason why, and this is a lesson talking about what we're talking about today is the reason why the guy never had a frown on his face and he never had anything negative to say about anybody. If there was, if there was trouble or ripples in the industry, he always glass three quarters filled with that person. He always bring out, you know, I'd go and bitch about it, man. That guy's, you know, you know, ragging on the IDA. And he's like, yeah, but why is he doing it? It was always that kind of approach. And it's a real lesson to learn. So it's too bad that I didn't get, I, I, it's too bad. I didn't take and get on the phone a little more often and tell him how much I appreciated him. You know, it really is. Um, so lesson learned, you know, lesson learned. Uh, so we wanted to take and, not sadness, man. I'm going to go forward. Rick's services today. And so uh, we're going to pay tribute to the dude because I'm going to do what he did. He always had a smile on his face. 
And uh, the guys, he is. He's one of the champions I'm always going to remember. So, Rick, we're, we're with you, man. Um, past weekend, man, I was up in uh, in Portland, Oregon. We had a we had a, an event at one of our, our double black distributors, um, Northwest Auto Spa, uh, uh, Northwest Auto Accessories. We've been up there several times. I haven't been up there in three years because of COVID, you know. Uh, we had a great one day event, but we had a mafia gathering on Friday night. We had a, a great training event. And then we did a, a new thing that Keith and Sydney put together with all the shops up there. And we went and did what's called a, we're going to start doing it all over the country was a shop crawl. And so we went to all these different shops and one of them um, was a home base shop. And I love that. I love that principle because I mean, Greg, Greg, he just, he just, he just has it. He hasn't made, man. I mean, I'm kind of the same principle. My house is you guys that way. Um, you know, it takes me, it took me, uh, my traffic was a little heavy today because I had to deal with the dogs walking through the backyard, you know, so I had all four dogs out. So my, 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 my commute was about 40 seconds today instead of 30 seconds because I had to pet, uh, all of them. You've got your, your shops on your property too. So, I mean, big, huge advantage, isn't it? Huge advantage. And it's a trend, trend gaining, um, momentum. And I really like it. So with that, we're going to have some individuals come up and introduce themselves because we're doing a five-day training. It's our last of the year. I didn't know. I'm going to put these guys on a hot seat because I didn't tell them this yet. Typically, and I don't know why, and Chris will back this up, typically the connections with the students from December going back 12, 15 years have always been the strongest connections we make personally. And so you guys are challenged to do that because we don't have a class in December that is in a strong class and I don't have really significant relationships with at least half the class really strong. And so yep. that's, a challenge, that's a challenge to us to keep that going. Right. So I was I'm, a December, I was a December student. Oh Jesus. Never mind. Whatever. I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Actually I say that and Chris has changed my life and I'm, 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 I'm always in debt to him for, for coming on and putting up with me and and uh, and 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 help me grow things, uh, he really has. I could not. My daily life, personally and professionally, would not be what it is without this man. You know, simple as that. He's really changed my life. Um, I'm going to give you a big old bear hug. You know, when you get, yeah. you're bigger than me. I'm going to give you a cub hug. Hug. You know? <laughs> great. So with that, let's go ahead and come on up. Let's go in the order that we said. We got a great intern. And then uh, LC Power Tools is in the house. We're going to have them come up and say hello. And then we're going to jump into this because today we're going to talk about success happens when you take your actions to areas of life within relationship and within business that most people just aren't comfortable in. And we're going to share some things that I've witnessed over the years and how, you know, my personality wasn't developed by, I wasn't born with a personality for business. I was born in a hole and we developed it off of the survival. And I'm going to talk about these things that the things I've witnessed with super successful people within small business, you know, big business is a different story, but I also spent a few years there too. So we're going to share some notes and hopefully give you some guidance, whether you're five minutes into the industry or you're 50 years into it. So, all right, with that, come on up, look into the light. I'm going to get out of the way and just put fun funnel through. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Raj. I'm out of Bellingham, Washington. And I don't have a detailing business yet, but in the next two or three months, there's going to be a new business in Bellingham. Thank you. Oh, hold oh, on. Thanks, Raj. Look at, I mean, it, like, I'm going to tilt that. You got to look that way over the truck. Look that way. Look at that. <laughs> is that on spot or what, man? That is, that is like the do. I mean, he's got it. He's got the haircut. All right. Thanks, guys. Come on up. Hey, everybody. I'm Peter with Park and Shine, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Cool. Right on. Welcome, Peter. Very cool. Hey guys, come on up. All right. Here he comes. Look at him. He's strutting his stuff. He heard girls are going to be on. Good morning. I'm Jacob from uh, JD's Detailing out of Marshall, Pennsylvania. Hold on. He's it. He really hates girls. He's really into pina coladas and walks on the beach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there might be one on. <laughs> I'm JD from JD's Detailing, Martinsburg, Pennsylvania. Is that like hey, the JD? Is that like the deepest voice or what? Yeah. I can't even imitate that, that go that deep. Good morning, everyone. I'm Duck from Duck Detailing over on the East Coast in Massachusetts. It's a good guy, man. He's here. He's our intern. So, all right. I'll see you in the house.
Hey guys, Bob Eichelberg. Do you want me to turn and get my due? No, no. Okay. 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 Hey, do me a favor. Put your hand on your forehead. Okay, that's a lie detector test because your forehead is really about. Oh, right there. Okay. <laughs> so now look at this. <laughs> Chris, don't encourage him. Um, no. it, it's really great to be here at Rennie's place. It's the first time I've been here. Rennie, you guys did a hell of a job. Thank here. you. It's impressive. And anytime we can come on and support you guys, um, the detailers, uh, the owners, uh, we're in it. So yeah. we're really we're really happy to be here. He doesn't know I'm going to do this. Okay. Who I am today in the industry, a big piece of it is because of this dude right here, man. Had, had this guy not believed in me and taken a chance on me, um, I'd been I'd been I'd already been hooked up with, with Shell Oil, big company. Shell Oil didn't help me like this independent guy did. And, and not only that, but he's a terrific and meaningful friend, and I adore him. I absolutely adore him. But if without you, I wouldn't be here. Well, thank you. I would, and Bob, with you, Bob Phillips, Lake Country is a huge part. Scott and I go all the way back. Scott and I competed against each other in detailing competitions at Oshkosh Air Show. Oh, my God. 20, 30 years 30 ago. Years. 30 yeah. years ago. And so, you know what? This is really cool to have you in the house, but you're a special man to me. Thank you. Thank you. You want to give me a hug? Though. Sure. Yeah, if I know. <laughs> and guys, everybody, it's a great time of the year. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Hey everyone, I'm Jay Schneider. I'm president of Lake Country Manufacturing and LC Power Tools. And just reiterating what Bob said, we're happy to be here and to learn and uh, hopefully uh, get some great ideas for some new products for all of you guys to enjoy and make your life easier. That's cool. So, hey, hold on. He's got it. So, family <laughs> business. Yep. You know, family business. Second generation. Second generation. And again, all of us are, you know, we, we're, all, we're all family businesses. And so these guys have been a class act for a long time. They're, they've always been an ally, and they've never turned. They've never looked at us, even when I went way back with you guys, when I, I just had one little tiny shop. They were always there to answer questions and help out. So quality operation. So it's good to have you. Yeah, yeah. 40, awesome. Next year will be 45 years in business. Is that cool so or what? We're excited to still be around and helping everybody from just starting to those uh, – Veterans in the industry like Rennie. That's here, it. So. You know what veteran means? Old. That's another <laughs> word for it. That's okay. I like it's it. Seasoned. Oh, seasoned. <laughs> See, I like that. See, well sure. seasoned. Well, sure. seasoned. well seasoned. So, hey, let's jump into this again. So, comfort, man. Let's get, you know, today people just aren't, their comfort zones are this deep. And, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty, we don't, we don't take hardships very well. And so I want to I want to talk to you today about what I've this is more a, a observation for my own life, but watching other people, you got to remember we've, we're about 450 entrepreneurs through our program. About half of those are pretty damn successful. About a quarter of those are are millionaire status. You know, so that we've been able to get eyes on things. We've got everything from lifestyle businesses to multi million dollar empires, and that's just detailers. And so I want to share with you guys some of our observations of what we've seen and getting outside that comfort zone. And so uh, let's talk about this above all to survive is that you're going to come into situations, FUBAR situations, total FUBAR situations where you don't think you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Stick with it. Don't give up. You've got to survive everything that you encounter. Uh, you're going to have setbacks. Don't quit. You're going to have setbacks. It's not if. It's going to happen. Now, right now, we're living through a modern time to where not many businesses have ever taken and, and seen a setback. Is that we've literally got almost a decade of running pretty smooth and strong within a, a pretty powerful economy. Uh, and so we're going to have hiccups. A lot of people say the modern day economy has changed. We're not going to have the setbacks we did in the past. I disagree with that. I think we're going to have setbacks and we're going to see it. How close are we? Don't know. But I always plan on it. And I just, I never, but it never stunts my growth. I always move ahead. Um, never, ever doubt yourself. You can never, you've got to 100% believe in yourself no matter what, because you're going to have that little voice talking to you when things get a little tough. That am I this good? Can I make it? Can I survive this? The answer is yes. Push those things out, replace it with solid. Don't let the wrong people get into your mind. If they get your ears, they've got your brain. And so when people doubt you, when they say it can't be done, you're too young, you're too old, 
you're too this, you're too that. There's no, there's no way you're going to make money at that. You're going to fail. Is hey, man, you know what? I've I've heard all those things for years. I still hear them. Still hear them to this day. It amazes me. And you know what? I got down in here. Let that be your fuel. Don't take and calm down. And I don't get angry from it. I laugh at it now. I actually get a, a yeah, I've been told that before. You know, is is it, it's okay. It's okay to see those things. Is failures are not the end of the world. Failures are opportunity to learn like you've never learned before. And even more importantly, guess what they are? It's a time to build up your gut instinct. Is that if you're young or you're new and, and owning your own business, you could be an MBA and, and worked at a Fortune 50 company. But if you haven't owned your own gig, it's a whole different thing. The number of hats that you switch in an hour is unbelievable. We were talking about you know hyper schedules to where my schedule five, six days a week is extremely organized and extremely powerful and extremely packed is you got to get used to that. You also know when to pull the plug and back off. You got to know that I never put the brakes on or is that time that, 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 that comes back. I don't, I don't, I don't run at full afterburner eight, 10 hours a day. It's not healthy for you. And I don't care what you, what you get into twist of faith is going to hit you. You're going to have just shit that comes down. That's a twist in faith. Now, twist in faith, it may sound like a bad deal. Is It may sound like I remember coming into our shop one day when we were the biggest. We were doing back in the, in the, in the early uh, 2000s, right after 9-11 uh, happened. We are doing about 1.2, 1.3 million. And I remember having so many headaches with staff. And I remember just getting back from SEMA a few months before that. And talking to a guy that had a big shop also. And I remember thinking about it and having all these staff that were whining constantly. And I remember coming home and telling Diane, I just fired 80% of the staff. I just let it go. And we took another, we got higher in. I doubled my prices that next morning. And you know what? We made more money that next, those next several months and leading into several years than we did doing one point. We were doing almost half that, and I was taking more home. Is because I had dead weight on me of people that didn't share my passion, that didn't share my 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 image, that didn't share where we we're going. Part of that was my fault, is I hadn't shared our dream. I didn't share my expectations with them. I didn't share where we we're going. I was a boss. I wasn't a leader. There's a big difference between being a leader and being a boss. And so I had to learn that. Was it a, was it a good move? Changed my life forever. It was a very positive move. It was scary, but you know what? I got in for about 18 months. I worked very hard in the business, and then I got out of the business and got out of the way. I was in the way of my staff. I let my staff do the work. I trusted them. I, I had the best detailers money could buy, and were they as good as me? Honestly, no. In a few things, they weren't, but in 90% of what we did, they were because I trained them to be, and I let them go out and do it their own way and didn't get in their way. Big, big difference. Stay flexible to change. You're the absolute vision on this. You're going to get older. The younger generation coming up as staff and as peers is going to change. If you fight that change, you're going to become an old person really quick. If you adapt that new way, you don't have to be part of it. I still like my 80s music. But you know what? The youth of this industry, both aged youth, or wise youth, people that are coming into it later in life, and the brand new folks that are young, that are in their 20s and 30s, man, that's my motivation. That makes me. I, I think they're brilliant. I don't think there's anything. I love this new generation. Um, are they hunked up in some ways? Not these guys. They got the right ideas. And that builds me up, believe it or not. And then I see people that are my age or older that are doing it, and they're, they're, in, they're in such a good they're on, they're on supersonic speed with having to put any thruster into it. As they've just got up to speed and they're 22,000 miles an hour and they've just got it cranked back and are just going. And the man, to me, that's like, wow, I need to get you guys there. I need to get you there so that you can take and live a life, be up to that speed and elevation, but you're not killing yourself to do it. That's the goal. And when you take and change with the times, 
and you take and you, you take and, and adjust, guess what? That's what's going to happen. Time change, you need to change. You need to adapt. Attitudes change, technology changes, um, products change, attitudes change, customers change, customers' expectations change. You need to go with those changes. Uh, let the doubters and haters absolutely, I don't let them fuel me as in a burn. I let them actually, I get a chuckle out of them now. I let them be my entertainment. And it's almost like, oh, yeah, really? You know, I had a high school football coach that was accused, showing with these guys, that was accused of running at points. So the next season, he scored 1,100 points in 10 games. He said, that's what running points are, if you want to see it. I've always put the – I've, I've put the – we used to switch around. He'd put us in, and he's a Hall of Famer, Coach Markham. Look him up. Hall of Famer for high school football. Double wing, that's the dude that made the double wing, coached on, on the double wing. But to this day, the gratitude towards that man, it was a love-hate relationship. You hated the guy, but you knew he was making you. And he was old school. He put hands on you. You did something wrong, he put hands on you. And to this day, he if, if he, he – God rest his soul, he died a couple years ago. If he was to walk into that door five years ago, I'd pee myself out of respect. But yet, I the guy made me, you know. What did I do? I go Every time I'd see him, I'd go back and tell him that. I'd go back and tell him, man, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be the man I am. You know, and that's a big part of it, too, is owning it. What I just, I meant every part. It's not because it's here. I tell that every day. I tell the kids last night, my daughter's sitting here. I said, you're going to go out when you get back, and you're going to go talk to Bob. I want you to go up and give him a hug. Because what you have today in your life is greatly due to his belief in me. And she's like, really? I didn't know that. And so we were, and she knew who he was, but she, he didn't, she didn't, she didn't understand the craters that the man put into my life, meaning positive craters. He just blew. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't about putting himself out there. He put me out in front. Big lesson. Big lesson. As you put others out in front, they'll do the work for you but always appreciate it. I'm looking at a man right now. Puts a young man out in front. How many times have we heard him put this young man out in front? Lesson learned. He's a big dude. He could have a big man's complex. You know what he's got? He's got a big heart complex. He knows that's his bread and butter. He works his butt off, but he pays tribute to that young man. He's, that young man's not a, a, a generational gone, gone wrong. He sees value in that young man, and he's told us 10 times while he's been here. And it's only day three. I bet we hear it 10 more times. Is he sucking up to him? No. I guarantee you he whips you when he needs to. He corrects you, and you say, yes, sir, and you learn from it. And then you go home, and you say, son of a bench. You know? And then you, for the next day you come back, and you realize how important he is to you. You've also, I've heard you several times pay tribute to him and his family. How important is that? That's a massive, massive lesson that you need to take away from this. You only take one thing away from this today, that's it, is show appreciation for everybody that's put you forward. Constantly. Now, write a hardcore plan. My plan is simple, three pages. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you right now. My notes for today. My plan is a, just about, there's page one, page two, page three. Chris and I will write a plan for next year here shortly. It will be about that size. How many times will we change that plan? A lot. It will be adjusted, maneuvered, depending on what we're witnessing. We already had to adjust it. We had to throw an extra training in because we're sold out until, until June or July of next year. We had to bring in another March training. We're already, we're already going to add another one. And so your plan's constantly, how can you wiggle? How can you put this in? How can you adjust? I had amazing mentorship. One of them was right in front of me. The other thing I've done is been able to find amazing mentorship through you. I've attached myself to young people that are succeeding because I want to learn at their brains. And some of them have got an outstanding view on lifestyle. I gave that up for about a decade. It took me a half a decade to get it back. And I still abuse it every once in a while. I'm coming off a 12 week period to where I've pretty much abused and threw that lifestyle thing completely out the trash. We got it back in check, you know. We got it back. In, it's going to happen. It's not. It's not staying on that hamster wheel. It's being able to take and realize, okay, full afterburner. I've been going, going, going. Back off. Don't put the brakes on. Don't land that sucker. But come back off that afterburner, 
and, 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 and cool down on the, on the fuel that you're burning. It's really important. My will to survive is second to none. And my competitive level is second to none. I am, I am to a fault competitive. The only person I know that's more competitive than me is the woman I, I married. And you know what? That's actually been a really good thing because we, every once in a while, we overstep the bounds with each other. I've been caught doing that with her. You know, Jim Gogan's brought me to reality check a couple times where he saw me get a little, a little feisty with my wife. Yeah, you know, a good friend when he tells you calm the f down. You know, and I did. I was checked. She's been checked. You know, because it's not really it's our nature. That's we're aggressive. Thank God I married somebody that's the same way, and she owns more guns than me. Um, <laughs> I pay respect. We just learned that. It's it's hugely important that you pay respect. But I'm going to switch this. I talked about paying respect to people in the industry. I just talked about it. Your significant other, your spouse, your wife, your husband, your children, your coworkers, your staff. is You know, it's funny. I always say that. I probably said it a hundred times. I heard a full bird general say one time that he's pretty high up on the tree. And when he looks down at all his fellow monkeys in the military – is he sees a lot of smiling monkeys. But every once in a while, he gets out of the tree and he sneaks down and he looks up and you know what he sees? A lot of monkey ass. Because a lot of people will only smile when they look up, but they're not very happy when you look at the bot from the bottom up. Every once in a while, you got to remove yourself, go to the bottom of the tree and ask some questions from the bottom and not see a bunch of smiling faces looking up. People always smile when you're ahead of them. What are they, what are they doing when you're behind them? Are they showing their ass or are they turning around and giving a smile? really important i always thought that was cool um i'm thankful and appreciative this is huge and we're gonna get into this in a sec second um i'm thankful i met rick you know our friend services today i'm thankful that i'm a blue collar guy that's been able to invest in real estate i'm thankful i've been able to take and keep my wife um from having to have a outside job most of our life where our kids had a mom our kid didn't come our kids didn't come home to empty homes our kids came home to a, to, a, to a home, sometimes chaotic, sometimes stressful. But they came home and they had people there that, that, that they knew they loved them. We never pushed our kids off on other people. Thank God we would be able to. I feel sorry and sad that there are people that had to do that. But it was my goal because I always had somebody at home that loved me. We didn't have anything else. We didn't have much money. I had a home. I really did. It wasn't, it wasn't very nice, but it was ours. And I had a lot of love in that home. And I wanted that for my kids. Financial rewards versus landmines. Let's talk about this for a second. Wants versus needs. Is that I am very, I've got an addiction. There's somebody else in the room that's worse than me. How many new trucks have you had this year? Three. You got an illness. It's, it really is. So I'm on my truck right here. And you're, they're gonna, you're gonna see a lot more about this here in the coming weeks. It is the 56th vehicle I personally had, not, not including Diane's vehicles. So I, I, I do have a little bit of addiction, not as bad as his. Um, I've had to be careful with that addiction because there's times I wanted to go buy stuff that I really shouldn't have been buying or leasing or anything else. And so I've had to, I know that, I know that's a weakness. Um, I don't, I, I've got a wife that doesn't go out shop. I have to buy her clothes. Um, I've also got a shoe and a boot fetish, you know, and there's a point to where is it a want or a need? Well, now I'm to the point where I've got it to where even if it's a want, I can go do it as long as reasonable. But even where I'm at financially today, I take and carefully analyze even a boot purchase. Even a boot purchase. And, 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 and so I, I would take and recommend that you do the same thing. A lot of people, the other thing is saving. You know, every time you get paid for anything, you need to put money away. And if you took and put 20, 25% of everything you earn in a savings and you pull a little bit out as you need it, if you need it, you know how much money at 22 years old you would have when you're 32 years old? Jim Gogan just, just shared this with, he took and started a retirement account for his staff. Brian didn't want it, but he did it anyway. He just bought a home. He was able to take tax-free and borrow against that account for his down payment on his home. He, he hardly put anything into that, but yet he's got a nice little bucket of money sitting there because he thought ahead. And so you've got to think financially strong. You've hey, you know, uh, go, going back real quick to what you were saying about, you know, making purchases and the things that you want and stuff. Uh, 
it reminded me, I saw a quote this week, you know, from the actress, uh, Ingrid Bergman, you mm. know, um, I think she was in, uh, oh shoot. Now I can't remember. The name. Anyway. Um, but the Tower quote was, Inferno. I think she was in Towering Inferno or she's in a lot of stuff back in yeah. the day. But, um, the quote was success is getting what you want. That happiness is wanting what you get. Oh, I love that. And boy, I thought it was pretty good. Boy, if that isn't true. Yeah, it's so be responsible, have savings, control what you spend, know what's making you money. A lot of times we 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 offer what we like versus what we're making money at. Know what your market wants. Deliver that. You can here's what we started out with. Our market that we started back into detailing in in the 90s was not it was a very wealthy market that was not into detailing. We it took us five solid years to get to be able to, to sell the service we, we really wanted to be offering. But we knew that it would take that time. Now it's profitable, not seriously profitable, not high end profitable, but we had no, no debt. We were buying houses, very modest, realistic houses. We had staff, we had new vehicles, we started other businesses. So we were successful. But we just weren't to the point we wanted to be yet. It was it was in my my game plan. But within that within that five year mark, we totally changed the whole market, and we did it one customer at a time. And we set the expectation level. It is and we 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 totally still probably shouldn't have ever sold that shop. I should still own it to this day. Even Jorge was here just a few months ago, and he's like, "Why the heck did you ever sell this? You know, we should have just kept it going, man." And you know what? He's right. And so. Go back over and be above the board. This is a big one. Is from day one, pay your taxes. Tax me, especially now, especially now, they're going to be hunting for money. They already are. Is that you got to pay your taxes. You have to have insurance on your company. And if you're going to have workers, you got to have work-related insurance on them, workers' top and everything else. 1099 contracting in this industry, I've said it 100 times on this podcast, is very tricky. I won't tell you it's impossible, but it's nearly impossible. So you've got to think about that. You've got to be above the board as soon as you can. Now, did I pay a buddy of mine, Jeff, under the under the table for the first few months to get going? I'll tell you, yeah, I did. I did. But I got him off of that as soon as I could and immediately. Because the last thing you want to tango with is is the government. You're, really, you're going to lose that battle every single time. Long-term intent. This is really important is my vision was never short term. The times that I got into survival mode and made that survival mode more than a month long are the times I got painted into a corner. Well, if I just sell this level of service right now because my mortgage is due, then the next thing I know is I'm still doing those services three or four months down the road. Is stick with your menu and get a part-time gig if things aren't working out quite yet. So again, you're going to start you just think of it as a grower as a as a as a farmer is that you're going to plant your crop and you're going to keep getting an acreage you might start out with 40 acres the next year you might lease 20 more acres the next year after that 20 more maybe you buy those acreages up next thing you know is you've got a couple hundred acres that you're harvesting and you're making more money off of it you can't have short-term thinking because short-term survivability listen pay the bills the first year I understand it. Pay the bills. Don't do it by offering services that you don't really want to be offering that long. Keep it short term. You get into the car wash industry and you start washing cars, it's going to take you years to stop being a car washer because you're reliant on that, that money to come in to pay the bills and your customers now have a cheap product that they like. Is You've just become the Walmart. You're not even the target. You're the Walmart. And I know that's a it's a really it's a hard thing to pill to swallow. I did not want to get into that in the 90s. I knew it was a fatal mistake then. We didn't offer it. We offered it at bulk locations on fleets. We offered it as country clubs, but even then at country clubs, we would offer six washes. Everything else was express details because we didn't make money at the washes. We had to offer them as a hook. But it was the first six every day that came into that to that country club that got those washes. We we're sold out of washes. The only thing we could do is an express express. To, uh, uh, you guys are going to do it. A wash claim protect 99 bucks. Well, 99 bucks compared to 25 bucks. The profitability 
is huge. Guess what? People were angry at first, but once they had that service done, they're like, oh, I like that. Well, guess what? If they had it done weekly, we take it down to 79 bucks. But we didn't make that much less because we had we went from doing 10 to 25 a day out of that country club. The only reason we offer that service is at one location. Also, we could do suggestive selling at that point off site. Hey, you know, your carpets are a little dirty. Hey, you know, your paint's a little rough is we would show them things. The next thing we know is our whole schedule to this day, the company we sold the foundational customers in that company are from that country club account that we got. And so you got to think that way is I had a plan and I executed the plan. Next with that is we had extensive goal setting with expiration dates. What I mean by that is that we want that country club. We started up on April, on, on Thanksgiving day of 1997. And I, that country club was brand new. I said, by April 1st, I'm going to have my foot in the door at that country club. On April 2nd, we were there working for the first time. And I didn't go to the country club. I went to its membership. I went through the back door and found somebody that was connected to the manager. Because I didn't want to go through and try to sell through the front. I wanted somebody else telling them how great I was. And that's what you want to do on there. Over the top ability to establish deep meaning relationships. Relationship is everything. You having a healthy mindset and viewpoint is the most important thing in your, in your business. Because everything starts and ends with you. The second most important thing is the relationships you're able to build. You've got to be able to build relationships with, with paying customers. You got to be able to build relationships with existing other businesses that you can refer in your market. You've got to build relationships with manufacturers. You got to build relationships with, with, with the guy coming out, the guy or gal delivering your products on the truck. You got to build relationships at, with, with peers within the industry from all over the country and all over the world. You've got to be able to take and build yourself up and communicate and not be, not offend people. You got to be able to be a chameleon. I hate to say it. You've got to be able to change colors wherever you go and fit in with a wide range of people because you're going to contact come in contact with hundreds of dis different personalities. Jay sitting there smiling like a, he, he gets that. I do it, it all the time. I, it's got to change hats. Depending on who you're talking to from the highest of the high up to, That's it. to people that are using our products daily. Yep. And all walks of life. It's great. We, we figured out one thing. We took our entire staff from the, the, the factory to Las Vegas last month. Bob and I both figured out we've never really golfed. So we went to Top Golf. Okay. And Bob and I figured out really quick that we both played linebacker in school. And we figured out that we're not very good at golf, but man, we can hit it back and hit that back net and score points. So we weren't even aiming. All we were, we were hoping for is that back net. And so you know, a couple of the guys were like, hey, man, if we do best ball, we're taking you guys. You're starting the open drive, you know, because we're going to use that that best drive. Couldn't putt, couldn't hit anything up close, couldn't. I mean, it was horrible. I missed the ball. I mean, it was it was I was just I mean, it was just try. It was just pure murder of the ball. But, it, you know, we figured out, man, golf thing's kind of addictive. Kind of like that. You know, I don't have enough time to get good, but if anybody wants a golf partner, I can hit that thing out at three or 400 yards without a problem. I'll get you there. Just don't put me on, don't put me on the precision stuff because I'm slicing it every which direction. My point was, is that we could take the lingo. I can talk the language of golf if we have to. I can talk. I, I was the number one. My kids were into performing arts. They'd put myself and my wife out selling wine as a fundraiser. I don't drink. I know nothing about wine, but I would take and learn about those wines that we select. That so I would take and I'd say, okay, Diane, sell me what the hell. This one's got a real woody flavor. It's got or it's got a fruity. So I would just mimic what she told me, and I said, would you like a little sample? Man, I took and I sold. I sold my butt off on wine, and I don't drink, and I know nothing about wine. Why? Because I was passionate, and I know how to get along with people. I know not how not to offend most times. Know how not to offend people. Um, I actually control my personality online. Is that I've got a certain way I think. I don't share how I think or don't think. I want people to guess where I'm politically. I want people to guess where I am. And it's not because it's not because I don't believe in my. I just don't want to mix words with people that don't feel the same about me. I don't want the, I don't want to offend people, and I don't want to be offended. I just want to get along. And it's that's something hard to, really hard to do right now. Now, calculate a risk asset assessment. In search and rescue, we've got what's called the GAR, the GAR report or the GAR. 
the gar is something that the Coasties came out with, Coast Guard. And what that means is green, amber, red. Every team member gives a gar report. And if there's a red, that team member's got a red and concern, we're gonna, a whole team slows down and evaluates this, is that when you're going into new opportunities, use the gar. Hey, man, this is a green. This, there is no amber in this. This is full green light. Let's go. Amber, I've got some cautions. I operate really well in the amber. I like the amber. I like to go into stuff that's a little risky that most people aren't going to enter into. Uh, red is that if, if a red pops up, man, you got to you got you got to have the financial backing to risk whatever it is that you're investing because it might go completely south. I don't like red. I didn't grow up. My friends that are super super wealthy operate in that red zone and it's paid off. I've never felt comfortable there. I don't like going there. I had to work. I had to work too hard for, for my stuff, and that stresses me out. So I don't like red. So use that. So short-term. Short-term thinking is today and tomorrow, next month. I can see going 30 out days with, with your short-term survival tactics of selling items and taking risk. What I don't go into is when the short your short-term extends past that into a year or six months or a quarter. Meaning, I'm going to do this service now for this person, but I'm not going to do it again. Okay, I get it. Your mortgage is due. Child care is due. Your car payment is due. You don't want to be late. You take something and you normally wouldn't. I get it. You can't make that habit for them. You've got to take and stop taking and, and doing things that aren't productive and or profitable. Long-term thinking is don't put yourself into short-term survival. Is that you've got to take in long-term is long-term. If you're struggling a little bit, go get a, I'll tell you, I don't drink, but if I was a young person right now starting out, or even old person, I don't care how old I am, is we shared the, the Carol Shelby, you know what he told us, drop me off in Michigan in January, butt naked, not a dime in my pocket by June, I'm going to have coin in my pocket and be on my way to being a millionaire again because I know how to do it. Because that's true. But when you're young, you don't have those resources, is that I'm going to get a part-time gig, man. I'm going to work part-time. I'm going to be a bartender. I'm going to go, I'm going to go put myself at a bar where people that have the cars I want to detail are at. And I'm going to start conversations up with them. I'm going to be a valet parker. I'm going to be able to leave stuff behind. I got two guys that did that in their business. And they killed it. Absolutely killed it. And they're independently wealthy now. They don't have to worry about all the bullshit. They paid the price in the early days. It's not rocket science, but yet so few people act on those baselines. That's why so many businesses fail is because they can't, they don't, they don't understand themselves. They can't build solid relationships up and they don't know true marketing. And then they don't know how to sell. Is that, let me tell you, I have so many people tell me, man, I'm just not a good salesperson. You better become a good salesperson if you're an entrepreneur. Because you're selling yourself every day, you're selling a product, you're selling a service, and you've got to be able to take and sell something. We talked about soft touch. I do not like for sales. I like to give imp information, massage people over the long haul, let them come back again and again and again. I don't, I don't care about one-time customers. I want repeat customers. The other thing I do is most, the most people don't when, when I was in competition with, with other detailers or even trainers right now, is that I market back to those people that have already done business with me. Is that I'm constantly, we just had an event here with, with 100 people. You know, we invested in that. We spent a lot of money to take and put back into people that have given to us. And it worked, we had a great time. We had a great time, that's what we're into. You know, so, Renny, it's, it's, it's interesting you just mentioned, you know, selling yourself product and, and service. Uh, Joel from IGL had chimed in just a few minutes ago and said in that exact order, you need to sell yourself, product, service, and then your company in that order. Well, isn't that something? Because Joel, Joel's kind of a successful guy with a pretty damn good life, pretty damn good out view. Uh, and another guy that, whoo, man, do I look up to that guy. And, and we're both pretty short, so that says a lot. <laughs> um, but Joel, thank you, because you know, you're a guy that gets it. When Joel and I have more conversations about the industry and who's getting it, you know, and, and, and people that you see them, they're going, they're going off on this tangent, and I'm like, whoa, man, they're going into deep outer space. I don't know if we're going to see them again, you know? And they just so far out there, and, and a lot of times we just don't see them. So let's go in the takeaways. Today's podcast, LC Power Tools, thank you for being here. 
Uh, we appreciate it. And of course, double black doesn't happen without them. Um, and so let's talk about this. My time on search and rescue in the military has given me a unique viewpoint that relates back to business survival is that you can weigh too many people, whether it's in life survival, when I get to them on the mountain, um, whether they get into combat, wh whatever they do is in business. I got, I got news for you. Combat's daily. You're, you're in a different kind of combat. Thank God it's not the combat that our kids go face, you know, that are in the military. But it is combat, and it's stressful. Matter of fact, my break points aren't of seeing what I've seen. My break points, I've seen some, I've seen what humans do to humans, and it's sickening. But I've been able to, I've been able to capture a way of dealing that. Thank God my brothers and sisters that serve alongside with me, we've, we've, we've got a good network, and we're able to, we're able to release that information. What gets me are the stresses that I develop from business, believe it or not. The financial stresses. There's triggers that just take me down a road and I got to pull myself out. And it's really, really, it's, it's deep, guys. You cannot put yourself in those positions. But people quit. They quit on life and they quit on business way too quickly. They don't put the time in that they need. They want it to be painless and effortless is listen it's not this generation it's generations for thousands of years is they anytime the first person something sold something is that everybody saw that person making money and wanted to duplicate it the reason why the majority of people fail at it is the pain that you've got to that you've got to endure to make it successful they blame others for mistakes and failures is it might be a staff for something done wrong it might be it might be a spouse that didn't support him. It might be a, a parent. They got mommy or daddy issues. It might be all these different things. and They just don't take any ownership onto themselves. It's quick to blame. Listen, everything that happens is your fault. You let it be there. I said, even if it's death, if you're having a problem and struggling, my mom, I don't know if I'll ever get over losing my mom. It's been two years. I think of her every day. Am I in a deep depression? I'm in a deep appreciation is because I know my my future and all of you got I don't care 22 years old the end game's the same we're all going out naked man with nothing you know what you're taking with you your heart and your soul you know what you're leaving behind your heart and your soul that's what you're leaving behind in the meantime it's our our job to be as successful as we can to build up others enjoy this journey and share that journey with others and how you're being successful needs to be spread down to other people we compare our lives to the lives that don't matter to us. We've become so comparative in this world today on how we compare. And let me tell you, most of it are bullshit. First off, why are you, I always say it, I don't even know, really. I know the, I know the Kardashian, the one with the big butt. I mean, I know that, isn't that funny? I know that one. I don't know who they are. But yet, I mean, are we still comparing ourselves to Kardashian? I don't even know they're a hot ticket still. I have no idea. I might be like that could have been yesterday's news. But I heard so many people in on these reality shows and all the, why are you looking, even on the TV reality shows what, what, or, or car guys, you know, why are you comparing it? It's a show. We produced Undercover Billionaire. Uh, one of the most, one of the coolest things I've ever done. It's a show. That dude is, Glenn Stearns is the real deal. He's a billionaire. He, he was so down to earth. But the whole, it was a show fake? No, most of it was pretty real. Well, let me tell you, you got, you've got a mic in your ear for a reason. Is The producers are guiding you of what's going to sell on that show. So you can't stop comparing yourself to that. Stop comparing yourself. Most, most of the entrepreneurs that you guys follow on, 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 unless they're out living a life, these, these, these guys and gals are grind, grind, grind 24-7, grind, grind, grind themselves right into the grave. Is that... There's a there's a detailer, and I don't know if he's comfortable with me saying it, but he's really got into overlanding. He's out of Texas. I'll let you guys guess. It makes me no prouder to watch him getting out in those Jeeps and going to Colorado and going to these spots and seeing him going out and enjoying life. I got to reach out to him and tell him that. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's very he's a he's a real good guy, and he's out of Texas. And if you're watching this, I'm really proud of you because I've watched your life change in the last couple of years for the better. And I like seeing you not just grind. I like seeing you go have fun. Um, this is going to take and, and, and maybe piss a few people off. But
the life of appreciation. I really did some self analysis the next last few months on this. Who is showing the most appreciation within 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 the entrepreneur mindset? Top performers. The the true top performers in this industry are constantly pushing other people ahead. They're constantly paying tribute to the other people that have gotten them where they're at. I see it all the time. Is that they constantly are, are paying it down and saying thank you. The middle ground people are the least likely to pay it ahead. They're the ones to take full credit for everything they do. They're the ones that probably aren't going to be the top performers of the future. And then the new entrepreneurs. The new entrepreneurs, you guys rag on them. It's usually the middle ground people that are saying, why the hell are you asking that question? Because you were new and dumb too at one time and you're inquisitive. So let me tell you, you new entrepreneurs, thank you. As you succeed, if you want to be a top performer, keep that appreciation all the way to the top until you make it as high as you go. Where is my end goal? Don't know. I haven't reached it yet. What's my next move? New business opportunities. We're starting one right now. You know, something completely on the fun factor. It supports everything we're doing. Are we going to be successful with it? Absolutely. We already are. That's why we're doing it. Is there, do I have any new business plans? Absolutely. What's my favorite business that I've ever ever had? The one I haven't started yet. I'm 55 years old. Don't know. I, I've got so many plans. I say this all the time. A few months ago, I'm sitting there. I, I, I mind mapped out all the fun things I want to do in business and life. And Diane looks over at me because I'm like hitting my head. Oh, my God. She goes, what's wrong? I said, I just planned out everything I want to do. Everything I got to get done. And she goes, why are you so upset? And I said, I got, I, I can need another 75 years. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to get 125 out of this body, man. I have no idea. And I said, and she goes, we got to cut the list down. I said, I can't. I already did. I had, it was like 150. And I said, I've cut it down to the bare minimum. How cool is that? I'm going to charge after life. My body's going to be broken. My mind's going to be filled with love. My heart's going to be filled with love. And I'm exiting just like Rick did. So with that. Hard work and long hours alone are temporary fix, guys. It's a temporary fix. Because in the game, long game, you're going to look back and you can't have any regrets. You've got to enjoy your time with you. You've got to enjoy the person you are. You've got to have fun along the way. Business, business is a blast. But the fun factor is what feeds that business factor that pushes everything together that makes it all worthwhile getting out on those side by sides, you know, get, getting out with those people and, and having a, a campfire, getting out of my horses, take, taking, taking Chris to Vegas and hitting 140 miles an hour on 15. That's the fun shit, right? And not getting busted because the radar detector is working. Perfect. <laughs> you know, those are the fun factors. If you are a decade in and still killing yourself, you need to reevaluate. If you're five years in and killing yourself nonstop, you need to reevaluate. If you're five years in and you're putting that afterburner on and pulling off, good job. If you're 10 years in, 15, 20, 25, hitting that afterburner, I'm glad you got the juice to do it. The fact that you're able to recognize when you need to back it off, the throttle, good job. If you think that you're going to get 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years in, and not have to occasionally hit that afterburner, you're lost. And you don't, you don't like what you do. Man, I like hitting that afterburner. I like complaining about hitting that afterburner. I like being worn out from hitting that afterburner, but I like the catch up period too, and looking back and going, Woo look what we just did. But you gotta make sure you do that at the right, right time and it doesn't affect other people. Your relationships, your kids, and your health. It cannot affect those things. So with that, that's all I got. But well, we want to thank you. Well, real quick, before we wrap up, um, I don't want to turn this into a Q&A because we don't have that kind of time, but I did get a couple of questions here that I think would be good to address real quick. I'm all game for that. So um, before I get to those, uh, Joel says that the Kardashians are still hot, by the way. Are and um, he says they have real companies that generate real money and they're all billionaires. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, I'm not them. I do like the booty, though. Yeah. So, um, Maletsky's Detail Garage uh, asked, um, let's see, where does question go? 
does investing in yourself include hiring business coaches, uh, oh. which I think mentors fall into that? I got I got two three right now. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh my, I mean, that's what these guys are doing. But Joel, you don't realize how often that I go to these guys. How often I go to Joel? How often I go to Bob, Dave, Key? All these guys, Team PN, all of them. You don't realize how often I go to them and they come to us for counseling, mentorship, input. Yep. Um, now some paid. Be careful. You know, be careful. Um, but if it's the real deal, you'll know it. Is that I, I want somebody that you got to have somebody that's. It, 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 and again, no, nothing against um, like Tony Robbins, man. The dude's incredible. But my goal isn't to be Tony Robbins. You know, my goal is to be somebody different. So I don't, I mean, Tony Robbins, I listen to some of his stuff, but that's not where I'm going. Does that make sense? I've got people in my life that I go to and I actually pay for mentorship that I see myself going there. And that's important. See yourself going where they're at or where they've been you know, of having multiple businesses and everything else. So absolutely. And you got to make sure you can afford it, you know, make sure that, you know, get your, get your ducks in a row before you go that direction, have some cash to burn, you know? So in, in addition to a good mentor, what are some other ways that he can invest in himself to, read. to better read, 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 read a book. I'm addicted to books. These guys, you know, I've always got a couple books around me. Uh, and I've got books for knowledge and books for information. Um, I read daily. I would tell you to spend 20 to 30 minutes a day reading. If you're a slow reader, that's going to be maybe a book a month. If you're a fast reader, it's a book a week. My grandma at the end of her life at, at 90 years old was still reading two to three books a week. She was a, a Renaissance woman. She was an educated woman. She was way ahead of her time. And she was an amazing reader. And I got that gift from her even when I couldn't really read too good, you know is uh you know cat dog you know hippopotamus so yeah read read books are really in books are and i'll, I'll tell you i i always say this uh, a couple great books uh who moved my cheese uh extreme ownership uh dichotomy of leadership uh the bible um let me see another one that i'm really uh the art of war i mean that oh there's a there's a, there's the full book and then there's the there's a cheater book that has like the, the most powerful quotes in it from the art of war. Um, it's a really, really, it's an, it's an old book. Um, know your why, know your why, know your why purple cow, purple cow is an older book that I just re reread. Somebody in our group mentioned it. I went back, found it in my library and pulled it out and read it. Amazing. Amazing. So there's enough reading for you right there just to go through and, and really, really get it. And the reason why I say the Bible is even if you're not a person of faith, is that, you know, over 2,000 years ago, a dude named Jesus was born, and we're still talking about him. He had disciples, and that's basically your customers are your disciples. Your staff is your disciples. Is that they, The leadership that Jesus had was amazing. And the fact that he stood up to things at a real unpopular time, uh, you know, it's, it's, I've, I've got a master's degree in world faith. A lot of people don't know that. And the reason why I got it was I love faith. I love faiths of all. You, you, if you, the Quran is a beautiful read. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, the Jewish faith is amazing to read. You know, if there's so many things that you can learn from the history of faith, good and bad. Some people are wicked. There's some crazy shit, you know, out there. Um, but you know, reading is a cheap, is a, is a, is a really cheap mentor. Yeah. You know, uh, Joel actually chimed in on this too. I thought I'd share what he said. He said, uh, find a mentor. Uh, someone who won't judge and someone who has made it says this is key. Don't learn from people who are great with just a book and videos and have not made it. Learn from someone who has been there or is there. That's exactly it. And, you know, especially in the trenches, you know, it's easy to go to, um, you know, is 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 uh, somebody that's like, you know, um, a guru. You know, I don't I don't I don't know. I don't follow any of the modern day gurus. Who's somebody that's really popular right now that like like inspirational speaking wise? Anybody got anybody at the tip of their tongue? Yeah, see, it's we're all kind of at a loss. Uh, Jocko. Jocko, okay, hold on. That guy's like a I got a boy crush on Jocko. Um, <laughs> that dude's amazing. He's a he's one percent. He's a he's a quarter of a tenth of a millionth of a one percent 
of, of, of a dude. That guy is so hardcore. Comes in, he's okay. He, he, he gets through buds. That's pretty amazing by itself. He becomes a accomplished SEAL. That's pretty amazing. Becomes a, a CO, commanding officer uh, of a SEAL unit. Um, he leads some of the biggest, most difficult uh, battles uh, in, in American history. Uh, then he comes out and he writes a book and he's multi-million. Okay, he's a little bit of an achiever. You know, that guy is somebody I really look up to. And, and it's not just because he's battle-ridden or he's a warrior. It's because he's gotten shit done on a wide range. He's he's 360 degrees is that he showed it. That guy's a, a jiu-jitsu master. Um, he's 50-something years old, kicking the shit out of people still. Uh, but he appreciates young youth. And he always uh, – you. I, I'll tell you, I wish Jocko – I wish I – Wish I could talk to him and tell him to write a book on extreme appreciation because he's got so much appreciation for the people he lost and the people he did battle with all the way down to the lowest ranking person. He was a high ranking officer, but yet he pays tributes to the lower. I just, uh, the dude, so yeah, good, good move that you can tell I got a lot of, but I don't see him as a guru because again, what Joel said, he's been there, done that at the high, highest levels in the, in the in the in the, the lowest places on earth, places I don't want to go, you know. I mean, his men; those are tough men. They're tough men that were his opponents. I love a podcast that he did. That I he talks about being I trained, and he says I I prepared myself. I spent a lifetime getting ready for battle, but I realized somewhere in the world there was a man training to fight me. I knew he was putting into his training what I was putting into mine. And I'd face off with him. That ain't the truth. <laughs> that ain't the truth. Um, so one one more before we wrap it up. Uh, what's the best way to become a better salesperson? Again, you know, I, I'm a big, I'm a huge fan of, of Toastmasters. Is if you get in a really good Toastmasters training, they, they they teach you how to speak. There's chapters all over the place. There's two here. I'm a favor of one, not of the other. Um, and then also your mentor, you don't have one mentor is you need to learn from people that know how to sell. Um, and I've actually, I'm going to start a new process. Um, well, I haven't even discussed this with Chris yet, but next year, one of my, one of my goals is to start within the, 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 uh, distributorships of PNS is I'm going to start a sales mentorship program. Where we're going to bring in here small groups and we're going to do exactly that. You want to take in ro role play is you want to take and find people that know nothing about detailing and practice selling them on a detail is that we're really big into role playing is you want to take, you want to record yourself video and audio on when you're on phone calls with people and then go back on those things and watch yourself just like you do detailing. You're going to see all of us. These guys are going into some mega sanding starting here in a couple of hours, mega sanding. We're going to record them a lot to show them what their, their good habits and not so good habits. By tomorrow, you're, you're not going to have any, too many bad habits. Very few corrections. None. You guys are all going to be on point. We're not going to have any issues. None. But you know what? Record yourself. Always have a smile on your face. Always be appreciative. Always take and be, be in soft touch. But you know what? Record yourself. Go to trainings. There's a lot of sales trainings you can do. And so find, us, find somebody that does really good. I, I walked in, we walked into a restaurant a couple trainings ago, and my daughter and I were here. My Our, our daughter had a, a, a little uh, uh, baby here, our, our granddaughter, uh, Kaya. Hi, Kaya. Uh, is that Diane wasn't here. So Darren and I went to dinner one night. This wait, this wait, this wait staff comes up to us, nice young lady. And I said, hey, how are you? And she goes, I'm much better now that you're here with us. I, I, I got her scheduled. And I took the group out to have dinner where she works. And, and it was because she was so pleasant and her service was over the top or connectability. But how I never would have thought about saying that. Well, how are you now? I'm much better now that you're here with us. Oh, my God. Where did she pull that out of? You know where it was? Life experiences. And she has a need and a desire to serve others. So, you know, mimic. When you go into restaurants, mimic good service people. When you go in and have and you have a phone call, mimic good phone calls. Borrow things from other people that do an outstanding job and learn more. It's again, it's building up your gut instinct. It's building up your books. As you know, I, I heard this. It's a beautiful statement, and we'll end on this. Life is, is, is putting chapters together. Is that when you're done, your life is a book. 
And if you created the right book, you're going to have a library where the knowledge you've saved, saved with people. And when you die, that library moves on. It sticks around with the people that you leave behind. Don't be a chapter. Be a library. I thought that was really cool when somebody told me that when my mom passed away. Is because to this day, I did not realize how many books my mom left me. I, I'm not even through the first one. And I got so many more books to experience of the lessons she taught and her and my grandma taught me. Is that an amazing gift or what? So start building up your chapter by chapter, book by book. Each platform in your life is going to offer you another opportunity to write your own book. And, it, and then, you know, I, I ledger, I, I, I journal a lot of things. I can go all the way back to, to the 90s of journals and keeping notes. Now I do it electronically and it makes it really easy to search out things. All right, Chris, I think that's it. We're going to get these guys working. I hope that helped. Hey, oh, was ab Absolutely. It's a good one. Share this. If you've taken and enjoyed something, please share it because we'd love to see people affected. Also take in any topics that you want to cover, send it to me, make a comment. And then if you want to send Chris or I a direct email and, and, and you can, you can correspond with us, Rennie at detailing success.com or Chris at detailing success.com. We want to hear what you're struggling with. We want to hear how we can help you. We want to hear if this made an impact. We like hearing from you guys and we want to hear from future topics that you'd like to, to take. If you've got somebody that you'd like to see on the podcast too, we'd love to take, we'd love to have special guests on and, and, and go over things with them. So with that, have a blessed day all. Take care. Be good to each other. Uh, Rick Goldstein, we love you. And uh, you're going to be missed, buddy. You take care, guys. Be good. <laughs>